President Biden's chief foreign policy advocates made their pitch to lawmakers on Capitol Hill for the president's $105 billion of aid package designated for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and other security-related initiatives. This funding is critical to outcompeting our strategic rivals. This request will bolster deterrence. What happens in Ukraine and what happens in Israel matters not to just Ukraine and Israel. It, rem it matters to us. It affects our national security. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us now. Nicole, House Republicans unveiled a $14.3 billion standalone aid plan for Israel. Has there been any talks of a potential compromise? Well, I think it's a bit premature at this juncture, simply because the House is out right now. They'll be back on Wednesday, where I'm sure this will pick up a, a lot of steam. I mean, for Democrats and even the White House has said in a pretty sharply worded statement that this is a non-starter. So uh, with that kind of position, I don't know that there really is room for compromise. You know, the administration feels very strongly uh, that the supplemental package that was sent up to Congress is the one that they would like to see Congress pass. They really don't want to split off funds funding where, you know, Israel is standalone, Ukraine gets handled separately. They want to keep everything together. Uh, Republicans have differing views on this. Uh, so perhaps the speaker may have to make sure he has everyone in his conference in line before moving forward with this package. But he seems to feel uh, pretty confident because he has indicated he'd like to see a vote move forward on the mm -hmm. House floor this coming Thursday. Well, House Speaker Johnson, the new House Speaker, has already proposed diverting IRS funding for Israel. Democrats are accusing him of starting early to play politics with this. What reactions are you hearing from both sides on that proposal? Yeah, well, as I mentioned, you know, for Democrats, this really is a non-starter. Uh, in fact, there was a congressman just today, uh, Congressman Brad Schneider of Illinois, who sent a letter to Speaker Johnson basically requesting that that full supplemental package that was requested by the White House be considered in full and that it's not offset with additional funding. As you know, with respect to this a standalone package that uh, the speaker is proposing, he would like to use funds that are currently designated to the IRS under the president's Inflation Reduction Act. He wants to cut those funds and use that to pay for this Israeli aid package. And, you know, many, uh, particularly Democratic lawmakers, are pretty floored about that because this is an emergency supplemental. You know, this is for, you know, when something needs to be taken care of right away, they don't feel that this is the time to try to uh, take on budgetary maneuvers to try to pay for it, although that has in the past kind of been a Republican position, not necessarily on these kind of emergency packages, but yeah. just, you know, Republicans often argue things should be paid for. But Democrats are saying this is not the time for this. You know, we need to get this aid passed urgently. We need to keep it together if we can. And so, again, uh, that debate uh, likely to grow louder by the day as we move closer to the House uh, approaching a vote. And they have also been historically more hawkish in times of war. So tell me, and, and specifically, I mean, talking about Republicans, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell not only said to face the nation last week how fervent her support uh, for funding both wars is, but he's continued to do that. So how is this uh, House's aid package splitting Republicans up on Capitol Hill? Yeah, well, we expect that House Republicans will likely align uh, with the Speaker's view on this, but it is interesting when you go across to the Senate and, you know, many Senate Republicans have indicated that they think the Speaker's approach is a right one, although they won't go so far as to say whether or not they believe it is feasible. But it does put this new Speaker, Johnson, squarely at odds with the minority leader in the Senate. Uh, the two of them obviously should be working together. But here, uh, there is a difference of opinion. In fact, just yesterday, the minority leader hosted the ambassador of Ukraine in Kentucky. So we do know that um, McConnell feels very strongly about Ukraine funding, making sure that Ukraine is taken care of. Uh, Speaker Johnson has indicated he supports additional aid for Ukraine, but with conditions. And that may be one of the reasons he is suggesting parceling it off. But in talking to other Senate Republicans, for instance, uh, John Kennedy of Louisiana, he told me earlier today he thinks that the House plan is a good idea. And he acknowledged that there is a divide uh, within Senate Republicans, one that needs to be rectified so they can 
settle uh, on a course forward. Of course, we're going to do a much deeper dive into all of this uh, coming up later on America Decides. We'll be watching. Nicole Killian, thanks so much. You bet. You too can watch Nicole on America Decides at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS News. I want to bring in CBS News contributor Robert Berger, who joins us from Jerusalem. Uh, always good to have you, Robert. So talk to us about how needed is this aid at this time? Well, uh, the aid to Gaza is trickling in. I, there are uh, maybe 30 trucks a day going in, and according to the UN, they need about 100 trucks a day. And they're you're talking about a looming humanitarian catastrophe, uh, where uh, according to the UN, there's just very there's just not enough food, water, uh, um, and medicine to go around, and there's no fuel, and there's no electricity in Gaza. The thing is that Israel's reluctant to let all that aid in because they don't want to provide a lifeline to Hamas. And and in terms of Israel, how needed is the military? Uh, assistance that we were hearing uh, Nicole discuss just now that's being fought in Congress? Well, the, you know, since this war began, the, the military aid has been, been is being flown in uh, from the beginning, but it's vital. I mean, this war has been going on over three weeks, and you have massive Israeli bombardment of Gaza, and you also have ground forces in there now, which require all kinds of... Um, Ammunition, so it's really vital, and the uh, the the Israeli government and people really are extremely appreciative uh, to the U.S. for all the support it's had since the beginning of the war. So, talk to us about the latest attacks and Israel's overall strategy in Gaza at this point. Well, Israel's expanding its ground offensive, um, and uh, basically they're starting to target the vast underground Hamas tunnel network. There are believed to be about 300 miles of tunnels there where Hamas fighters are holding out. And um, But, you know, there's definitely the fog of war in this ground offensive. We're getting very few pictures. We are hearing of street battles now as the Israelis move further in, street battles between Israeli uh, infantry, tanks, and Hamas gunmen who are emerging from their hideouts. So we just heard, in fact, that two Israeli soldiers have been killed. The army says that dozens of, uh, of, of Hamas fighters have been killed. The strategy seems to be to surround Gaza City, which is the headquarters of Hamas. Uh Many around the world have been calling for a ceasefire. Uh, Netanyahu yesterday was very adamant about not even considering a ceasefire, saying, quote, this is a time for war. How does that stance complicate both the possibility of getting those hostages out of Gaza and, of course, the humanitarian crisis that is ex escalating among Palestinians there? You have 240 hostages being held there in Gaza, and there are conflicting assessments about what this ground offensive will, will do. Will it make matters better or worse? The Israeli military and government are saying it puts pressure on Hamas to give up those hostages, to negotiate a prisoner swap. And also, it enables the army to gather intelligence and perhaps rescue a lot of hostages. Yesterday, they did succeed in getting out a 19-year-old female uh, Israeli soldier who was captured uh, on October 7th and held by Hamas. They rescued her, and she's back home. So the, the army says, uh, sorry, the army and the government say that's proof that it's a good thing, uh, this ground offensive. But on the other side, the families of the hostages, as well as some U.S. officials, are saying that this is not a, this is not helping a negotiations mediated by Qatar. Uh, to try and get those hostages out. It's too few that have been uh, released. Robert Berger, thank you so much. Thank you.